I have a question for you. Do you believe that your mistakes, wrongs, and sins bring down God's punishment? Let's explore this in the context of Psalm 6. <clears throat> I'm Nick Connolly, privileged to be the pastor of the Madawan United Methodist Church, welcoming you to Psalms at Midweek. Before we go any further, would you kindly swing over to the area and put a thumbs up? It helps to promote this video and all the offerings that I make on YouTube. We continue numerically since the first Sunday in Advent, moving through these Wednesday Psalms, which are part of the Bible through the seasons. The link below and also the direct link in the description box at the end of the video. So welcome. It's a wonderful time for us to be engaged in God's Word. <clears throat> it's only God's Word that's going to elevate and help us to reinterpret all the events that are going on in our lives, personal lives, political lives, family lives, whatever are the ingredients of what makes up your life. We come now to a psalm that will help you to organize and to reflect upon what truly is the most meaningful way in which we can approach that question about God's punishment for our sins. Or so we believe, or maybe we don't believe, but I believe it lurks there in the background of upbringing, God's punishment. But before we go any further, let's take some time to become quiet, to become still, to become relaxed. Some nice deep breaths that let the breathing just move on out, carrying with your breath and your exhales whatever you need to let go of, whatever that is. Let's pause for about a half a minute. Each of the daily readings in the Bible through the seasons, and we're just taking a sample of these on Wednesdays, begin with a fire starter, with something that is meant to ignite your heart, your soul, your imagination, to orient you to the particular passage for the day. In the Bible through the seasons, each day of the week has its own part of the Bible, and Wednesdays are dedicated to the Psalms. Here is the fire starter, which I've entitled, A Heavy Heart's Answered Prayer. God's grace in the shining star penetrates the earth, revealing the fragile goodness and hardened arrogance that lurk there. Here in the middle of Epiphany Week, David's bed of suffering evidences the struggle between good and evil. Verse after verse, come as waves of feeling expressing the extent of David's pain. However, the heart of this man extends even more, stretching his prayer to the utmost until he knows that God is answering him. The coming of Christ brings turmoil to resistant ones. The more you turn your life over to God, the more persecution you will receive. Expect it. However, expect all the more that God will bring you beyond your pain to the triumphant experience by faith of God's love and power in your life. Nothing nor anyone can take this away from you. So now let's turn to Psalm 6, the first of seven penitential psalms that were enumerated around the 6th century. And so we read together. It starts out with this heading, 
to the leader with stringed instruments according to the Sheminith, which is a name for an eight-string harp-like instrument, <clears throat> a psalm of David. Now, David was a songwriter, and he created it first, a thousand years BC, an oral tradition that kept moving on down. Eventually, either his own words or others created in his name. And that's the way we approach. We take as though the setting is David and his suffering. It personalizes it. So that what you're experiencing in your life, whether it's pain, overt, or it's down inside somewhere, whatever it is you're experiencing, we take David as a model for prayer. It starts out with the first verse, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. My soul also is struck with terror. While you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, save my life. Deliver me from the sake, for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who can give you praises? We continue now with verse 6. I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil. For the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and struck with terror. They shall turn back and in a moment be put to shame. So the psalm begins where the entire book of Job wrestles. What happens when bad things happen to good people or are we good people? That struggle to identify how it is that evil takes place sends the book of Job into multitudinous reflections until the end when he's exhausted with all these arguments with his, from his so-called friends. He just turns it over to God directly and says, and God in effect says, um, do I ask you to bring the sun up in the morning? I'm using paraphrases now. Do I ask you? He situates him into the mystery of the universe. There, my friends, is the beginning of that tantalizing question which sometimes torments our soul in one form or another. Am I being punished because of my sins? So the psalm begins with that problem. Lord, don't rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. The assumption is that God is not friendly. <clears throat> But what happens when we get to verse 6? A shift begins to take place. The full extent of his suffering and his crying and his weeping is on display. He turns the focus on himself for a moment and becomes aware of his suffering. His eyes waste away because of grief. What strong expressions. And then in verse 9, the Lord has heard my supplication. Oh, so the Lord is not the one who is the source of this turmoil within me, this suffering, this anguish about sin and evil and is God punishing me? He comes to the awareness that the Lord accepts his prayer. And he says also in verse 4, Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. There's the plea. 
And in verse 6, there's a turn. It's like the hinge. A hinge that turns the focus now to, while expressing his suffering in even more complete ways, the drenching of his couch with, with tears, the Lord has heard my supplication. He knows that God has heard him because of his steadfast love. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, God is not out to punish. God is pure love. And when we let that love in, it heals us. It takes away the focus, what did I do with guilt and shame that's going to produce maybe some wrath from God? No. All that you get from God is love. And in the presence of God, if you take what your soul is experiencing at its depths, and it takes a little while to get to those depths, that's why it's so important to become enraptured and surrounded and embraced by silence. Mozart said the most important element of music is the rest, the space between the music, the space between these offerings that I so love making for you in these videos and sermons. It's more the space in between. So that when you're finished this video and you revisit this psalm and all the psalms and all the scriptures that are presented to you, you can enter into them by entering into their context. The context of David's suffering. How does his context become your context? The context of the sacred writer, if in fact it wasn't actually David, doesn't matter. It's in the spirit and the sensibilities of David that the Spirit of God is going to speak to your soul to bring about your healing, to bring about the quiet release of all that tantalizes you and maybe even torments you about memories or whatever. All of that just vaporizes and washes away in the silence because you know that the silence bears the presence of God and the voice of God. It's the voice of God in that silence where and we'll be t talking about this this Sunday, about deep listening and the extent to which God is in the heart of your silence and is speaking the spirit of Jesus, the spirit of Jesus, which has been given to you in your, in your baptism or whatever has been your, quote, baptism, whatever has brought you to a spiritual awakening, to an awareness. That's where the spirit of Jesus the Holy Spirit, and whatever is your faith, it is that spirit, that divine spirit, that source, which is so loving and so kind and loves you so much. Thank you for being with us. I treasure these little meditations with you, and I hope that you will find them extending their meaning and their sensibilities to you for many, many hours and days to come. God bless you. I send you my love.